Thank you for joining another edition of Bumps and Thumps, the talk of wrestling. I'm your host, Brian Ferguson. My guest today is an icon in the tag team division. He started in pro wrestling in 1955 and went on to win with number of numerous singles and tag team titles with his brother, Maurice Mad Dog Fashan, in all the major territories. He is the best known for competing in the AWA, NWA, and Stampede Wrestling Promotions. He wrestled until his retirement in 1987. He is a member of the Cauliflower Alley Club. He's inducted into the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame in 2004 and the George Tragos Luthez Professional Hall of Fame in 2010. He is also the author of four books, the most recent titled Wrestling in the Past, Life in and Out of the Ring. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome Paul the Butcher Fashan. Butcher, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be on Bumps and Thumps today, sir. Well, you, you're very welcome, and uh, let's get on with this. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not getting any any younger as you. Uh, oh, you you sound great. You look great. Uh, for I want to talk about growing up in Canada, your family life and schooling. If you could just talk about that, uh, just give me a, br- a brief overview of how you grew up, your family, and and your schooling. Well, yeah. Okay. I uh, I was born in Montreal, Canada, in 1937. Okay. And and uh, my I was the middle child of 13 kids. Oh goodness! And in those days, uh, the French Canadian families were the most productive in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Céline Dion is uh, the 15th in her family, and she was a French Canadian. Anyway, just I don't want to get away from the sub from the subject. When I was the seventh one, I was the middle one, and I saw all colors growing up. Okay. Oh, <laughs> There, you know, there was uh, six older than me and six younger than I. <laughs> so I grew up to be <laughs> the baby face of the first. <laughs> the baby face of, of the first seven and the villain of the of the last seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. So in your book uh, that I just read, it's a great book, by the way, Wrestling in the Past, Life in and Out of the Ring. Uh, you talk about uh, your wrestling, how you wrestled in, in, in school. And then you uh, tell us a little bit how you got started in professional wrestling. I mean, I read it, but I'd like to hear it from you. I got, I got started, of course, because my brother, Mad Dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and... And listen to this. I, I, uh, I wanted, I wanted to be like my, like my brother, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and and fourteen, I got, I went, I started going to the YMCA to learn all the wrestling, amateur, you know. Okay. Yeah. Because my brother had represented Canada in the Olympics as an amateur. He had won the British Empire Games, gold medal, and and uh, everything. So, naturally, uh, because he was my big brother, and uh, I wanted to be like, just like him. So, yeah. I joined the YMCA. And that's where Mandog had learned to wrestle in Montreal. Yeah. But by that time, we had moved to the country, which is 80 miles from, from Montreal. Yeah. So I used to ride the train. Oh, wow. In the Canadian Pacific, I used to hitchhike three miles to high water. And go to Montreal, and 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 wrestle, 
Yeah. And uh, on, on on Tuesday night, and and then I'm going to stay with my um, with my uncle in Montreal, and then go and, and wrestle some more on Thursdays, and then on Friday I come back to the farm. And oh, wow. Back to the farm. Yeah. And. Uh, and my my father uh, would borrow money to send me to Montreal and everything because we anyhow to make to make, to make the story a bit shorter. Uh, oh, you're um, you're doing um, fine, sir. Yeah. Oh, so anyway, yeah. I uh, I. Uh, I went to um, I went to uh, Regina, Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. Okay. To wrestle in the Canadian Amateur Championship, and in order to do that, because in those days there was no highway that went from. Me. Come back here to the rest of Canada. Yeah, I had to go around. My father had to borrow money, mm -hmm. twenty-seven dollars to pay for the bus, and the bus went from here to uh, Detroit, and then Chicago, and then. Back to the U.S. I mean, back and to Canada. You 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 probably know this story. Anyway. And then I went to Regina and I I wrestled in the in the British Empire games, wow. and not in the British Empire games in the Canadian. And I came number two. Oh wow! So, on the on the way back, I called my brother. Uh, I, on the way back, coming back, I stopped in Chicago, and I used a pay phone and I made a, re, a reverse charge to my brother in Texas, and I said, "Hey, brother, I said I won a silver medal in the Canadian Amateur Championship." And I figured he'd be real happy about it, you know, because he had been there. And, uh, anyway, he said, all right, that's enough amateur wrestling. He said, you'll never make money wrestling amateur, he said. When I come back home, he said, you're going to turn pro. <laughs> and, that, and, <laughs> and that's what he, that's what he did. Yeah. And that's how he started wrestling. <laughs> and and uh, you you know <laughs> I mean I I've written about that and I I think about it every day yeah and then and then the rest is really history I wrestled after that over sixty countries you know? oh wow uh, all, all and I went all over the world even more places than my brother. And my sister, and, and you know, all my all my seven brothers did some wrestling, mm -hmm. including one of my sisters. Yeah, and uh, you know, I I was really from a wrestling family, but the the way we had started to wrestle was because my brother Mandan was always getting into trouble, and my father, <laughs> who, who was who was a policeman, people would come over and say, you're a kid, you mean I'm my kid, and my father got tired of them, you know, spanking him, and of course at 14, and he was already an amateur wrestler, and he didn't really want to spank him anymore, so he, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he took him to the YMCA. And, uh. That went straight in the mouth. And, and listen to this. This is how my dog started wrestling. All right. And and my my father 
had been friends with the coach at the YMCA. Okay. And he says, he told them, he told the coach, he says, he says, my son thinks he's tough because he's always beating up people. And he says, I would like, and I, he told that to his friend who was in the police force in Montreal, who was, unbeknownst to my father, he was also an amateur, uh, amateur wrestler. Anyway, oh. he said, I want to teach him how to box because my father was a boxing fanatic. Uh, he, he knew all the champions all the way back, you know, way back to Jack Johnson. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so the, the chief colleague was the chief of the Harbor, Harbor Police was also an Englishman that came from England, but he was a, a, an expert wrestler, but he was already in his 60s. Anyway, uh, I have to shorten my stories because once I start on something, yeah. I keep on going for it. You're, you're, you're fine. Take your time. Wait well, as long and, as you want. Uh, so Frank Saxon he had already heard the story from my dad. He said, he thinks he's tough. <laughs> and he says, you got to teach him. He, he had been, he had been, anyway. <laughs> he, and Frank's accent said, leave it to me. Uh -huh. So, he, my father introduced him to Frank Saxon, and Frank said, I, I, I hear you're pretty tough. So, <laughs> right away, my dog, he moves in his chest, you know, he says, Yeah, I'm pretty tough, you know. I can meet this guy, I can meet that guy. So, well, he said, Look, I, I want to see what you can do. He said, you see that old man sitting over there? He's, he's been, he's pretty old, but I want you to see what you, show us what you can really do. So yeah. right away, my dog is chest and boosted up and he's thinking, well, I'm really going to tear into this guy. <laughs> so, and he calls the chief Kelly, who looked like an old man, and he was an old man. But then he, he, he says, this, this is Maurice Vachon. And he says, he's going to show you. He tells us, the chief Kelly, he says, he's going to show you what he can do, you know, as a yeah. as a wrestler. So Mad Dog thinking, well, I, I got it easy, right? So he's moving to him. And this is Mad Dog telling me this story after, and years after. He's, and he says, I'm busting right into him. And he said, it took about three minutes, he said. And, and after three minutes, he says, I had one leg over my neck the other leg behind my back <laughs> and he says I I was tied up with my arms and he says I was upside down and all around and all I could see was a pair of testicles in front of <laughs> and he said I figured that was the old guy so I'm really damn thing. <laughs> and he said, sure enough, they were mine. <laughs> and that is a true story. And I laugh every time I read that. Because <laughs> my dad would told me. <laughs> and, and, and four years later, he wrestled in the Olympics. He was wow. 14 then. Wow. And yes. 
That's amazing. Yeah, and and my father <laughs> thanked the Chief Fally and Chief Fally after I I, I started to write my books and everything. Mm -hmm. He was still living, and uh, he he. He lived till he was 97 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, he became a friend of the family and a legend, you know. Yeah. Yeah, at first. But that's only... <laughs> no. <laughs> and, uh, and at first, then, and I have many, many stories about Mad Dog yeah. when he first to me. When uh, and then he started doing road work, and he used to take me along with him. Yeah. And you know, when you're when you're seven years old, you can run all day. <laughs> but if you, if you're just running down the road after four or five miles, you got fed up. I say, I, I don't want to run no more, and I'd sit out on the ground, and we run the outskirts of Montreal. And Mad Dog would pick me up and put me on his shoulders and run and, and run the rest of the 15 miles with me on my shoulder. With me on his shoulder. Wow, that's and, amazing. And later on, yeah, and 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 wrestling meetings, I used to tell that story. <laughs> and and you, and Mad Dog would butt in and say, "Well, you know when they say." He's not heavy. He's my brother. But he said it was a lie about Paul. He was always heavy, not heavy. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's, that's great. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about when you ran Grand Prix Wrestling. I, I read in your book that you, uh, you had a promotion. Uh, called Grand Prix Wrestling. Actually, it was already going, but it, you took it over. And uh... man, man, okay, that, 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 this is another story. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, after I, I traveled the world over uh, by myself, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to separate from my brother because I wanted to go someplace and see the world. And the only way I could do that is to go as a wrestler. Yeah. That way you know, I could afford it. So, you know. Mm -hmm. So it took me from here to Europe. It took me to New Zealand. It took me to Australia, wow. India, and and did I mention New Zealand and all over Europe and everything, everywhere where I could make a living. Yeah. With my trade. That's amazing. And, and uh, after a while, I came back home, and and then we started. To, my my brother said, "Well, it's about time you." Uh, he said, "You left for six months." He said, "You've been gone for ten years." <laughs> and I was gone for ten years, <laughs> and he says, "I'm making nothing but money." He says wrestling in uh, in Oregon, and he says I want you to team up with me. And he says we're going to wrestle in the Minneapolis territory. Yeah. And uh, then we went to the Minneapolis territory, and at first we became champions in the world. Yeah. In the AWA and American Wrestling Association. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and the rest is history, you might say. Yeah. But not really about, about my story or my life. I uh, kept on going. And, and I've said this before, and I don't know if I said that to you. I've written three and a half books about it. Yep. And there was a movie made about it. And I could write another three books and never write about the same thing. So, you know, and then not many people have had careers in any field. 
No. Then they can write four or five works about it and still have stuff to write about. Yeah. Yeah. You have a lot of great stories. Not, not a lot of memories. And, yeah. Yeah. And then and and I'm grateful for having read. I mean for having written all those books. Yeah. Because as you get older. You know, you lose your memory slowly. Yeah. When, when, when I, uh, there, there's another story that you might not want to hear, but my dad was one of the strongest men in the world. Mm -hmm. And he taught, he taught us how, to, he wanted us to learn boxing, but he, he found out that it was better to learn wrestling. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, the coach that taught us how to wrestle, he said, friend, take him to the boxing room because even the best boxers wind up and punch. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and we've seen it. Even the, even the champions wind up, you know, when they're, you know, you your, your, your head is not made to be punched at. That's when the screws become loose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and anyway, that's how we started. I started wrestling. And, yeah. And, and the rest is history, I guess. Yeah. I want to talk about your, your, your nickname, The Butcher. Uh, Tell us how you got that nickname. Okay. <laughs> well, I was laughing and I'm laughing. <laughs> so when I came back uh, from India and <laughs> after being gone 10 years, <laughs> wrestling on every way, my dog says, look, Paulie says, I wrestled that ever too, but he says, I never made money until they gave me the, the name of Mad Death. Yeah. And he says, we've got to give you an animal name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, and I, I, I'm thinking and scratching my head. I said, what the hell are you going to call me? So he's thinking and he's walking around and stomping and he says, I got it. I got it. I got it, Paul. I got it. He's thinking about it. We're going to be better, you know. Yeah. He said, We'll call you Paul the Pig. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a a, a carny language here. Okay. I'm gonna say fears you, you <laughs> son of a gun. I'm, <laughs> you know what that means, right? I can imagine what it means. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, I, I think I'm not going on the phone with me. <laughs> And then he started laughing, and he couldn't stop laughing, and I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we decided on, on the bull, I guess. Or, uh, and then it doesn't matter what we decided back then. Yeah. But I, I went up as bull. Oh, because I wrestled under a mask for a while. Anyway, yeah. that's the and, and and then and then finally he he said, Okay, well mad dog and the butcher. Mad dog and the butcher. So your brother came up with it. That's great. Mad dog and the butcher. All right. I read in your book about uh you with Andre the Giant, how you brought him over here when you had that uh, Grand Prix wrestling. 
can you talk about that uh how he yeah. was and how you got him over here and and got him going yeah yeah i had uh, when i was just before i started wrestling pro there was a, a big guy out of montreal mm -hmm. his name was frank Waller. He, he hadn't been in the police force like my dad, mm -hmm. but he had um, become a professional wrestler. And he was a great big guy and didn't have too many to wrestle around here. And this was before there was professional wrestling very much in Canada. This is a long time ago. Okay. Anyway, he, he went to France. Mm -hmm. And he became, you know, the, the, the Canadian champion in France. And he became a big star in Europe and he wrestled all over. Okay. And then when he came back to Montreal by that time, I was the promoter. We were just getting... Grand Prix wrestling started. Okay. And Frank told me, he said, Paul, I remember when you used to carry my bag. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, I've got somebody for us. You won't believe it when you see him. His name is Andre Rusimov. And he says, if you don't send for him, you're crazy. Yeah. And that was enough for me. Yeah. I said, give me his number. I'm going to call him. We're going to send for him. Okay. So that's how we got him. Yeah. And actually, what I read in your book, too, is that uh, was it Dick the Bruiser that came up with the giant? Part oh, with, with the name, yeah. We, we, yeah, we called him Andre Rusev, you know. Yeah, no, 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 no. We called him, oh, yeah, here in Montreal when he got here. Listen to this, it's a good thing my wife reminded me because I'm losing my memory. Oh. But in, in any case, when we got him here in Montreal, mm -hmm. there was a very famous. And a giant, he was like in, in, in seven feet tall. Mm -hmm. And he, his name was uh, the Giant Fairy. The Giant Fairy. <laughs> you get it? It doesn't mean the same thing in <laughs> French. Do you understand? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh gosh! <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, and, and, and so we got him as the in Montreal, and the people knew the story, and then and, and the aforementioned giant in French history and everything, and they associated. And then when I send them. To run, to run, yeah, and to wrestle. He says, "What's his name?" Uh, Vern, Vern Gagne wanted to use him in Chicago. Yeah, I said, "Well, we 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 call him the Giant Fairy." <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and then the Bruiser. Who was the promoter <laughs> in Chicago? He was in the room. He said, What are you nuts? He said, We can't call the seven foot four giant the giant fairy. And then people will laugh as out of the goddamn thing. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> And these are all 
you know, the, I don't have to make these up, man. These are all true stories. No, I, I, I read the book. I, I, I know. I do have to ask you about with Vern. Um, I've always been told that Vern paid really well, well yeah. in the AWA, and I read that in your book as well. Um, did you enjoy working there when you were with with the AWA with your brother? I enjoyed it tremendously. Yeah. And, and you know, Maurice had told me, he said, look, you got a funny personality, you know. Yeah. You know, and he, he didn't give any, everybody shit, but he said, don't, don't listen to that bullshit. And he said, yeah. take it with a grain of salt. But, you know, he respected that, though. Yeah. And, and the minute I got there, yeah. his respect switched to me. Yeah. So, you know, he he was not an idiot. Right. He was a pretty damn smart fella, except right. that he was also a bully. <laughs> yes, I've yeah. But not with us. Well, you're you're a pretty big fella, so I don't think he probably would have. <laughs> no, that, yeah, you know, he, he, he knew. I mean, we he, he might have scared other guys, but. Right. Uh, I wasn't scared of him, and neither right. was my dog. We know that. Yeah, I, I've I've been told that you know he paid well, but sometimes he was difficult uh, to work with as far as the matches and things like that, and how people wanted to go. He wanted to take them another direction, but they always, they all, everybody I've talked to that worked there said he paid well. He he, you got yeah. time off, and he paid well. Right, and and. and he really gave us shit when we said we wanted to leave the oh whole boy. <laughs> um, yeah. he went, uh, he, but you know, um, we told them we were leaving because we were starting our own promotion in Montreal. Yeah. And then after he jumped up and down and stormed and Give a shit and call us all, all sorts of names and everything. He said, Man, on your first show, I want to be booked on it. Well, there you go. And he came. Well, yeah. Because yeah. he probably knew you guys would put on a good show. Yes, we did. And, yeah. and it was at, you know, and a and, and, and new building and, and, and yeah. the and everything and shit. We we did wonders and uh, even after that we stayed friends with him. Yeah. No, I was friends with him till he left. And then, as a matter of fact, when we first got into the Hall of Fame, Vern came too and he got inducted in the Hall of Fame and we had uh, reunions and everything and we told yeah. stars, you know. Yeah. You really want to hear Tall stories you get together with a bunch of old timers <laughs> from those days. They'll sit around and tell us some doozies. Oh, and, I... and all of them were true. Yeah. 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 Oh, I I would love to just, you know, I'd love to go to the, right now with this COVID, it's really hard uh, with yeah. going anywhere. But uh, tell me about your experience when you got inducted into the, uh, the Hall of Fame. I mean, you got inducted uh, in 2004, uh, and then in 2010, the Luthes. What was that like for you? I know it's quite an honor. Uh, I don't think, honestly, to me, it's not publicized enough. You know, the WWE Hall of Fame is so publicized and, and all that, but that's not really a, that's a organization Hall of Fame. You know, the, the National Hall of Fame is the one that to me, means more. I don't know about what you think about that. Well, I well, listen. I'm 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 proud. I mean, you know, even if there was no Hall of Fame, yeah, I I was so proud. I'm being able to make my living after living on the farm milking cows and shoveling manure. <laughs> you know, that, 
just to be able to make a living yeah. and travel the world. I mean, I could not, I could not, I keep repeating that, and my wife is no. so fed up of hearing it. <laughs> and I think I probably uh, I've told you already that if I couldn't do it again, I would do it again for free. Yeah. No, I mean, it's if you love a job and you love doing what you're doing. Oh my goodness. That's the that's the best part of being in a in a yeah. job or a position or whatever you're doing. If you love it, that's I love doing this. You know, when I finally retire fully, this is what I want to do. I want to podcast with with yeah. wrestlers, old, you know, from the past to now. That's what I want to do. And and I enjoy doing it. I enjoy talking to people you got, you know, the generate. To me, you are the trailblazers for what wrestling is uh, today. Yeah. Even in the 80s, 90s, and now, it's guys like yourself, your brother, Vern Gagne. I mean, I can, I can name 100 guys. Yeah. yeah. But, and, and, and women. Uh, your, your sister, Vivian, when yeah. she was, and, and, your, and your daughter, Luna, they trailblaze for what we have today and, on, and the kind of money they make. And, and I appreciate that. And I know wrestlers do too, but I want to tell you that I appreciate everything you've contributed because I loved you guys as a kid, you were villains, but yeah, you guys, you and your brother just knew how to do it right. And your brother did a lot of the talking, but you know, it was, it was great. I loved it. And, 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 and you know, I, I listen, you're, you're on a good run, and I really should not interrupt you. No, go ahead, please. You're, this is we're here to listen to you, not me. <laughs> but, I know this won't be understood by everybody, every every listener that you have. But you know. We make our life mm -hmm. making people hate us. <laughs> yeah. But in wrestling as a villain teaches you more and more about life than any business you can be in. Yeah. And it teaches you how not to hate people, but to love people. Yeah, more. I can see that. It teaches you more about what people will, will do when they hate somebody. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, no, that's people, definitely people true. They love to hate. They love, I, they love to hate us. I heard your wife, D, back there. That's yeah. definitely a true... True statement. You love to hate them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so uh, anyway, if, uh, and, and you know that the, the, there was, <laughs> and I had a hell of a background. You know, <laughs> I'm the middle of one of thirteen thirteen kids. So I saw all colors and everything. Yeah. So it was a good background. Yeah, so I I've also know that you guys are uh, you have a Facebook fan page which I'll put on in my comments underneath when we're when we're done tonight. Um, yeah. Do you have uh, merchandise and things like that on there that people can then people can buy and, and yeah, listen, yeah, how about if I had me tell you? Okay, okay. All right. Well, right. let's talk about then. What are you doing now? I know you guys are are uh, right mm -hmm. across the U.S. border in, in Quebec there, and yeah. And uh, I know this COVID stuff is probably had you guys hunkered we're down. And Hang I just, on. okay. Hang on a minute. Okay. Hello. One of these days, I'm gonna like kapow him right to the moon. <laughs> So oh, anyway, we have, a, <laughs> we have a fan page. Uh, it's Paul the Butcher of Vashon, and uh, he has his books on there and T-shirts and uh, pictures. And 
videos. We're going to be doing a lot more videos. We were mm -hmm. hoping to get on the road, but yeah. uh, now we're going to be stuck here. So he's going to do a lot more videos and things like that. So okay. check us out. I will. And for those that don't know, this is uh, the butcher's wife, D. Uh, <laughs> she is the force behind the man, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I always, my motto, happy wife, happy life. Absolutely. The, you know, Paul, Paul knows how to say yes, dear, in quite a few languages. <laughs> and <laughs> I also you. hear he's a great singer. Oh man, he could sing. You wouldn't believe how he could yeah. sing. He yeah. sang, uh, he sang a wedding song to us. We were married on a, on the top of a mountain uh, on a big rock and yeah overlooking uh the canada and the uh, lake memphis magog up here in the northeast and yeah he had throat cancer so he can't really uh sing you know yeah. in public but he sings to me all the time so yeah. poor me <laughs> oh i'm sure not no okay well i don't want to take up too much more of your time um I well, really... he's got more time he's just uh, had a drink of water here while i'm you know he's ready to talk all night if you want to brian so oh i just wanted to, uh i talked about the hall of fame and stuff i i, I just i will close it out real quick and uh if he wants to get back on and uh i'll, I'll thank hey, you and, and we, oh there he is i hear you all right yeah. well butcher i want to yeah. thank you so much for your time and uh your stories it's been great and and d Thank you as well uh, for finally getting this together. Uh, for those that don't know, we had a couple of hiccups with uh, technical difficulties, but we finally got it uh, going. And uh, again, Butcher, thank you so much, sir, for your for your time and, and your stories and, and for what you've done for wrestling, you and your family. Uh, okay, uh, okay, listen. Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me. Uh, if I'm Cutting you short, but before oh. I, I, I I know you're you're saying goodbye, but before you go, I'd like to tell you about Santa Claus. Well, please. <laughs> How do I get into it? You just start, you, you've been to Santa Claus at a mall for, this will be the 20th year, but yeah. now, you know, you're not doing the mall, but you will be doing it virtually through. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He'll, oh. be, he'll, be coming in li he'll be coming in uh, live from the oh. North Pole. Oh, well, that's yeah. wonderful. That's great. I'm, sh well, put that out on your Facebook page and I'll, and I'll, Put it on mine when it comes out the link, and we'll we'll get you a lot of a lot of people watching you and asking yeah, for yeah, presents. He's gonna, yeah, he's going to. Uh, yeah, we're going to make a video about that tonight as soon okay. as we get on from here. Okay. And it will be Frankie will post it, and then. Uh, okay. Yeah, so he's used to. You know, we usually start uh, Black Friday, or you know, and. Oh, we'll okay. See. So let, 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 let me tell you, let me tell you how it started. Okay, please do, sir. Lisa, <laughs> bring it through. <laughs> anyway, listen, I, I, we've been in the house in the woods here, my wife and I, years mm -hmm. ago, and log in the house, forty feet by twenty feet wide. Yeah, and 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 then uh, after a couple of years, I said, "This is nice. We're looking at the mountains." I said, "But I'm, I, we're going to die looking at this beautiful mountain." I said, "We got to do something." Yeah. So we started doing fairs and festivals and selling our stuff, wrestling stuff, and then we went to the mall, <laughs> and and then. The, we we were selling our stuff in the in the mall, and the sand that they had was drunk. And, and and the manager, he he threw them all over the kids and everything. Oh my goodness! And he, and he finally fell off the chair, 
And soon they had to cut it off. And the manager in the mall said, Paul, you got to do something. He said, I said, okay, well, I'll take his place. So I took his place, and that was 22 years ago. That's wonderful. That was 19 years ago. And he said, it was only 19 years ago. Well, that's and, wonderful. And, yeah, and I've been sad that every year ever since then. And this year too, virtually. And, 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 and this year, uh, and we're figuring out a way. Mm -hmm. And I even talked to the people on the mall. Yeah. And how to do it. Uh, and like, like we're doing now, except virtually yeah but that's, not, i'm gonna stay home yeah it's that's i mean that's the good thing about technology now we can do that and yeah. I, i'm i'm so glad we're able to talk like this uh yeah. virtually and 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 i really just again uh, appreciate you guys uh yeah. butcher i appreciate your stories and and all you've done for wrestling uh, and you know people don't know they i mean you were in all those branches you were in the awa you were in the wwf you were in the nwa uh stampede wrestling all the regional uh major promotions and i consider you and i know a lot of people do a trailblazer and i just want to say thank you and again thank you for taking the time to do this with me today and uh i really appreciate it sir and, and all you've done Okay, and all I have to say is thank you very much. Ho, ho, ho! ho. <laughs> all right, on that note, on that note, we're going to end it here. Again, thank you very much. And uh, again, thank you for all you've done, Butcher. I appreciate it. Anything. All right, sir.